Good day, everyone. Welcome to the Pop Culture Field Manual podcast, sitting right at the intersection of weapons, action, the military, and pop, pop culture. culture. I just wanted to be a part of that. Sorry. You're good. Thank you. You're always welcome to join. Always welcome to join. My name is Cameron Fath. I am one of your hosts through this journey with you, and I am here with one of my good buddies, Israel Wright. Yes. I, am I am I in the good am I in the good buddy tier? Is that, have I graduated? We're great friends. Not just yeah. No, We're great I, friends. no, great friends. Absolutely. For many years to come. Yes. Until that one thing that will tear until us the apart. Until that breaks us up. Yeah. Our success. Yes, that's yeah, right. Absolutely. Business partners. Torn apart. Never start a business with your friend. Passion becomes obsession, and then yeah, uh, and yeah. then just falls down yeah, that right. road. <laughs> At least we called it. That's right. Yeah. So we the clearly first step of recognition of an issue is recognizing recon- that it's there. Yeah. Recognizing that it's even an issue. But anyways. We're going to power drive right through that friction point. <laughs> and you know how we're going to do it? By answering more of your guys' questions. Yes, the fan question episode is one of our favorites because uh, it's easy. It takes no <laughs> it's preparation. It's really easy. does not uh, take any preparation. And we genuinely like answering all your questions. We love getting uh, emails and notes. And I've actually, I got this really touching one uh, more recently from young guy and he, he was just saying that you know he really looks up to us and you know his dad was in the military is in the military and stuff and uh and uh anyway just like he got inspiration from us and he's you know we've been we've inspired some people cameron like legitimately like join the military follow their passion career path thing like things it's like nice that to hear. It, it is good to hear it's very fulfilling yeah. and that's not just an egotistical thing to no, feed my cool. ego which is already ginormous yeah you don't need any help with that i don't need help with that no i don't <laughs> But it is awesome. We do, we say it every episode, we enjoy you guys reaching out, and we enjoy responding and interacting with you guys, and it makes us feel good to let us know that we've made an impact on you. Yeah. So, we touch you, you touch, touch us. us. It's all very touching. It's all, a t- lot of touching. Good touch. feeling. Good touches. Nice, appropriate touching. But, are you ready, man? Without further ado. Let's get into this. The re-re-questioning. The Avenge of the Questions. This time, or the it's answers, personal. the revenge. Yeah, this time it's personal. <laughs> <laughs> the first question we have, uh, the first question we have, is uh, Johnny G nineteen ninety on Instagram. He's asking, uh, what fictional military, what fictional movie, army, or universe would you like to be in? This is actually people have asked this a couple of times. They like if you could imagine yourself in a fictional movie, fictional mm-hmm. war, fictional universe from a video game, movie, pop culture. Yeah. What would that? What would that be in? Well, I already know your answer. I mean, probably aliens. aliens. Well, aliens. see, here's the thing. You know, there's a just subtle difference between imagine, like, actually being in that situation, <laughs> and like imagining, like, because I love the movie Aliens, obviously. But uh, man, that's a, that's a sucky situation they're in, man. You bad, know, yeah. and who would I be? Hopefully, I'd be like, nobody survives. Like, almost nobody well, I mean, survives. A, you know. I mean, sorry, Johnny. But that's a very <laughs> vague question. You don't have to be like in that very specific situation. Sure, this is sure. Just, if we're going off the doctrine here. Right, right, right. You're right. If my interpretation broad, of this law. That's right. Which we know, are making up right now. Right now. It says, what fictional movie, army, or universe? Just part of it. So you that's can be right. part of the, is it Continental Marines? Yeah, a uh, Colonial Colonial Marines. Continental. <laughs> the Continental Marines. The Continental. The 17- that's like fixed heresy. Fixed bayonets. Yeah. Cheerio. 1776. <laughs> So I fixed, <laughs> baronet, my, I fixed my baronet and I charged my baronet. I fixed my my bonnet, yeah, my those bonnet. Damn red coats. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're talking about a universe, we're talking about a universe. I'm going through puberty right now. Um, that's okay. It's a little late. 40, 40 <laughs> 30 something years ago. Yeah, that's right. 40, but thank you. My birthday's in 16 days. Congratulations. Thanks. Another year closer to death. That's right. Well, that's good. That's a good way of putting it. The Marvel Universe, man. But I would want to be somebody with superpowers, you know? That is cool, yeah. Yeah. I like Captain America that. or something like somewhere in like the super soldier program. I would I would like to have been like another super soldier, you oh, know. Yeah. Just yeah. Get yoked for free. Yeah. Does anybody not like how can you be against steroids when literally people <laughs> love Captain America? He literally is the perfect example of what happens when you give somebody steroids. Right. They literally just, just become a superhuman and are really <laughs> good at their job. They and stop, really aggro. 
Yeah, they literally. It was like perfect steroids, though, because it yeah. only happened once. They only had the, enough formula for one, you know, thing or whatever. Yeah. But not, but not apparently. I've never taken steroids, but yeah. literally. <laughs> hey, man, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a good question. Um, because I'm like more the olden days. Like, okay. I would love to be in a Viking military, okay, or Viking army and just pillage and get really. good That was at, like, like their whole. It was a part of their whole culture was war, kind of like yeah. the Spartans. I guess. Yeah, like that would be a great era to come. Actually. They did a lot of man on man, so I mean, let's, dude on dude, that dude on dude contact. The Spartans wrestled naked, sweaty, oily wrestling yeah. matches. I mean, that depends how you look at it. It's twenty twenty one. Could could be into it. Who knows? But uh, that would be yeah. I'd probably go back in time and just be like sword on sword, spears and shields type mm-hmm. of type of world. That was when you had to really what they call it, you know you had to go up and grab your enemy by the belt buckle. You had to get real up close and personal. You yeah. know today we got like long range rifles yeah, and like bombs you can literally and stuff just like be that. sitting there like smoking a cigarette or just in the porter potty and all of a sudden drone strike. Yeah. Boom, you're dead. <laughs> you're dead. Yeah. Yep. But back then it was like okay how long is my can I shoot this guy from like 100 meters away? Does my bow get that far? Mm-hmm. Now we got to close with and destroy the enemy with my hatchet. You could kind of uh, you know if, if we're talking about old time eras you know like Anytime where any culture like the the you know Knights of the Round Table kind of thing you know where it's like this honor there was a code that you lived your life by uh, that's always something that's called to me or if you want to like combine it with a little bit of the sci-fi go to like the Warhammer 40k universe mm. be like a space marine or something like that because mm. you get the honor and the, you know it's basically like space knights anyway yeah. but then you get a bolter rifle and you get to be genetically enhanced and like and steroids ge- you know yeah exactly that's steroids we always come back to it steroids always goes man back to steroids man. <laughs> We need to have favorite military steroid references in pop culture. Yeah, literally. It all comes back to steroid. They just need to let the military do steroids and be really good. Because isn't the job literally being better than the other guy? Yeah, you got to close with and destroy the enemy. By any means necessary. Faster if you got steroids. I don't know if they make you faster. We're not condoning steroids, people. (laughs) I've never done steroids. But speaking I of think, which, we got our first sponsor, yeah. steroids. D Ball has sponsored this. <laughs> Trend has sponsored this. Testosterone has sponsored the PCFM uh, podcast. No, this, this podcast is sponsored by Menergy. Yeah, Menergy. <laughs> Turbo. Feed sport. the beast. <laughs> All right, let's move on to another. Let's do it before I go down a rabbit hole. Okay, this one is coming from Lucas via our email, and he says, "When it comes to rasp, oh, this one seems like a spiss." Very specific question. When it comes to RAS, which is the Ranger Assessment and Selection Program, do you have to qualify physically before you sign up to become a Ranger? Or if you go with an option 40, do you have to test before you receive that contract? So, Lucas, let me just get into your question here. Um, No, you do not need to qualify physically before you receive that contract. The only thing that is required of you, as far as my knowledge now, I mean, it's been six six seven years since i did it actually six or eight now uh, sorry seven or eight years <laughs> math nine one, ten six it's nine. Been 20 years yeah it's been it's been a long time he's 45 but uh no you just need to qualify for your basic gt score which is the score you get when you take your asfab yeah, test, which ASFAB. is your test before the military gt stands for general technical exactly. there's different areas of knowledge that they test you on yeah yeah and your general technical score is just a combination of math and science mm-hmm. so if you're good at math and science i believe nowadays when i was when i was going through i think it was 110 minimum but now i think it's a 105 because they're getting lazy and they were taking anybody yeah just come um, on get in here get yeah, in the door just get in here but yeah you need a 105 to get the contract but you will have multiple chances in RASP, and I'm pretty sure they will strip you of your contract if you can't pass the physical stuff in basic mm. training. You need to maintain, I believe, or at least when I was going through, it's 80% in each of the scores, which is push-ups, sit-ups, and the two-mile run. And then additionally, you need to be able to do is it six pull-ups. I think it's six pull-ups. But yeah. Actually, I, it's a side note. I was just looking this up the other day, and I think they changed it, like maybe in 2018. But it's it's not the 
push up, sit ups, two mile run anymore. It's it's like a it's almost like a CrossFit type it's of functional fit. The ACFT. Yeah, there you so go. The ACFT is the Army Combat Fitness Test. So it's replacing the old ATFT. You're like throwing a ball behind yeah, your back, actually, and you're doing like I've done it. Double so. R pull ups. How is it? It's good. All it's, right. Yeah, I actually threw up. I actually want to make a YouTube video where you, where I do it. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> like I'll, put, I'll, I'll lead you through it. Cool. I, yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be, be awesome. Uh, yeah. No, there's some things. It's really good, and like there's you have to do a lot of stuff in a certain amount of time. So it's not like you do a deadlift and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna take some break. No, it's like you have like a specific amount of time to do the next thing. And the worst thing you do is to sprint, drag, carry. Yes. Yeah. That that's what I threw up on, and it's <laughs> like I maxed everything except for that. And the two mile run, so I got a pretty good. Score. I think I got like a two eighty seven or like. Is it still max, generally like three hundred topping out? Yeah. Okay. And it's like only one person I think has maxed it so far in the military. Oh, wow, cool. So uh, that yeah, it's a very good. It's actually a really good test, and they're having actually a lot of problems with it. They're doing a lot of um, messing with it because people aren't making it. Women are having a really hard time passing oh. it. Look, yeah. hey, listen, I'm going to say something right now, okay? Uh-oh. I'm going to get it. Look, I took a vacation. I'm a new man. It's not, look, I love women, all right? Yes. I love strong women. If you know anything about my taste in pop culture, you know that I do. Um, it's all about the standard, man. Standard. You can't lower the standard. But we're, we're talking about training a fighting force, right? Mm-hmm. And if there's a mission, there's a task that needs to be done, that has to hold the standard, yeah. not – well, we got to get the numbers in there, you know. Yeah, and so I hope that everybody understands where I'm coming from with this because, you know, yes. it's all about the standards. So the thing about it is it's an it's an easy test. It's an easy test to pass. Okay. Because all the scores are just like the low. If you're just a shit bag, you can pass it. Mm. But uh, it, to max it is extremely difficult. I think so, it's okay. uh, yeah, man, we can run you through it. It'd be awesome. Yeah. But, so, yeah back to your question, Lucas. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, I'm pretty sure my I was talking to my buddy who's one of the RASP cadre currently, mm-hmm. and uh, we actually went to RASP together. It's really funny how it's come like full circle. Nice man. And uh, he's telling him that he told me last time I talked to him that they're still doing the regular APFT because the Army Combat Fitness Test hasn't been fully integrated yet. Okay. Um, but they're still doing the 80 percent in each of the push up, sit ups, two mile run. But yeah, just if you can maintain that standards. Great, you should be fine to get all the way to RASP. Nice. All right. Next one. Will uh, sent us an email asking, uh, if you were tasked with writing a movie about a real-world battle, like Black Hawk Down, We Were Soldiers, something like that, what would you write about and why? Do you I, know what war doesn't get any credit? I, I, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, it's the Korean War. Yeah! yeah. Dude, nobody says shit about the Korean uh, War. They, well, they literally... I just... Listen to the audiobook version of, of this uh, book called Devotion by Adam Makos. Mm-hmm. And I know that uh, is I, I got a buddy at what, Black Label Media. They did Sicario and stuff like that. But And uh, they were working on a movie way back when about this story. It's Jesse Brown, Tom Hudner. Uh, Jesse Brown was actually the first uh, black naval carrier pilot in the history of the military, yes. So it's kind of a, kind of a big deal, and uh, and it's about their friendship, Tom Hunter, and they came from different parts of the of the country, you know. And, and Je- Jesse Brown's like sharecropper son, Tom Hunter, like high society, you know. Uh, and they they became friends, and they flew missions together in North Korea during the Korean War, 1950, and then. Uh, I don't want to get well. I mean, if you if you Google it, you know what happens. But like Jesse Brown gets shot down in the mountains of North Korea during the winter time, and Tom Hunter purposefully crash lands his plane and mm-hmm. goes over there and tries to save him. It's a really touching story, and I wish that they would make like even like a mini series, like an HBO mini series, because there's lots of other stories that the that the book covers of like the Marines on the ground and their stories and things like that. Just yeah, yeah, totally. They don't. I would totally do something that has to do with the Korean the Korean uh, war. And I know that I probably wouldn't be able to get it financed by most of the studios in Hollywood. Cause you know, they're all in cahoots with the China. Yeah. You know, all know, cahoots with China. Yeah, they, they are. So you got 10 cent, you got all these kind of companies and stuff like that that are financing movies today. And I, I don't think that the Chinese people or Chinese economic, I don't think that it would happen. <laughs> like yeah, like you have to get it probably right. financed from someplace else. But uh, yeah, man, Korean war, man, that'd be I Mine go back to the Korean war. Cause I don't know why it's the most avoided like war. I, I mean, a lot happened. A yeah, lot, a lot. It took ha- it, it was three it years. Finished. It never ended. It, it never took it ended. Ceasefire. Yeah, was, and that it's been ever since. 
So like, it's how we got North and South Korea. It's how that yeah, happened. That's how that. Know? That's a big deal. Yeah. And uh, so there's actually a couple things, and obviously they have to be about Rangers. So, <laughs> uh, so basically, and back then there was no Ranger battalions. It was all Ranger companies. The, would they just get attached or sent to different areas? No, they were like just that? Ranger companies, man. I think right. there was. This is gonna so they this. hadn't consolidated into no, like the three the main. Ranger Regiment, no. Okay, Ranger Regiment. It was okay. it was just Ranger companies. So and it's either this one always screws me up. It's either there was either thirteen in Korea or that was in Vietnam or okay. there was sixteen. They they flip flop, I believe so. But anyways, so you ever heard of Colonel Ralph Puckett Jr.? Never. Okay, he actually is the most recent Medal of Honor recipient. Wow. Finally, finally just received the Medal of Honor, and this was like a couple a month, a couple months ago. And he's like, he was born in 1926. Wow. So this guy's old. And I remember this guy because he was literally, he goes to every single ranger school beginning. So he'll sit there and he'll like gather everybody around and just talk to you and be like, this is ranger school. This is what you got to do. And wow. yeah, I remember he was at, when I started ranger school, he, we like got us all around and listen to this guy. Because during the Korean War, he received the, uh, the Distinguished Service Cross for the Battle of Hill 205. So okay. it was a really, it was basically, I'll read you a little bit about yeah, this. Yeah, go for it. So, That's crazy. Okay. So five, let's see. Okay. Through outnumbered, though outnumbered 10 to one, the twice wounded first Lieutenant Puckett and his Rangers defeated five success, successive Chinese human wave counterattacks for four hours that night and into early morning hours of November 26. Finally, on the sixth assault, with supporting artillery fires unavailable, the Ranger company was left unable to move. Despite multiple orders to abandon him, Fellow Rangers fought their way to his side, evacuated him to safety for his actions during the Battle of 205. First Lieutenant Puckett received the Distinguished Honor Cross and was later upgraded to Medal of Honor and awarded on May 21st, 2021. Dude. 70 years later. Dude. Yeah, so That's that would... Crazy. I think that would be an awesome movie to make. And then also, also in the Korean War, the 2nd Ranger Company... So he was in the 8th Company. Okay. The 2nd Ranger Company was the only all-African-American ranger company to exist so dude yeah i never like, knew about yeah this, exactly man. so it was all african-american dude, all the brothers the that's brother awesome ranger squad. man yeah i love that man yeah so you, they, you want to hear stories like that yeah, you know what so i mean it can, yeah they were the all black pretty much ranger company and they fought in uh yeah they they fought in korean war as well so i think there's a lot of lineage that is not talked about especially in the korean war yeah that's a good answer, man. It's so funny that you thought of that because I was that was going to be my answer right off the bat because I just listened to I took my my trip was partially a road trip, so that's mm-hmm. the book I listened to there and back. Yeah, and it's such a good story, man. It, it it's is. it's just a, it's just a shame that nobody's ever heard of it. You know, it is a lot of history, a lot of history that has yet to be, you know, made into a movie because yeah. there's so much, so, yeah. so many films you can make into yeah. a movie about. Yeah, what man. Nowadays. Yeah, we, we we I mean we could talk about the the. Second World War, and that's oh, yeah. and there's been ton of movies made oh, about man. that. Yeah, you know? yeah. Come on, Hollywood, Korea. Um, yeah, Korea. Come on, Korea. Come on, you got to. You hey, got to. Black Label Media, Trent, mm-hmm. Trent Luck and Bill. You, know, I know you're out there. I know you're listening to this right now. Let's make it happen, man. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Let's let's hit this next one. All right. Uh, Faceless Jake ninety eight uh, sent us a question on YouTube. Who's the best non-American special forces unit you've ever seen? I get a lot of questions uh, like, if what units from other countries have you worked with? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it, he also means that, but um, what what do you think, Cameron? Uh, I like the SAS. I always had respect for the SAS, yeah. man. The British, I, I maybe partially because that's where special forces gets a lot of their lineage from yeah. the Green Beret itself and things like that. Yeah, but they have a really great reputation, man. They do. Those. <laughs> They're tough as nails. Yeah. And they're huge. Yeah. I know we were we were cooped up with them uh, in Syria. And it was really funny because everybody thinks, at least when I say everybody, I think. That's me. That's me <laughs> thinking this way. That's I didn't know, like, so England is part of Great Britain, but Great Britain is like a combination of a bunch of shit, right? <laughs> Chris, right. help me out here. Great Britain is Northern Ireland, yes. Scotland, Wales, in England, that makes up yes. Great Britain. So it's like saying, "Yeah, I'm American, so I'm British, so I'm American, but I'm a Texan." Kind of, right? Yeah. So if you're from, if you're saying like I'm from Wales, you're like it would be like if you're from Texas, kind of, yeah. But you're yeah. American. Okay, that's the way I can see. It. And I just learned this because Ted Lasso, 
Uh, Ted Lasso. Thank you, Ted Lasso. Thank you, Ted Lasso. Two weeks in a row. Yeah. But anyways, the PL of the mortar section there for the who was running their like operations, he was from Wales and he legit looked like the guy from the the commander of the wildlings in Game of Thrones. Yeah, the, Tormund they, Giants Bane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look identical to him. I love it, man. And uh you couldn't understand a word this fucking <laughs> dude said. You yeah. only could understand him say because <laughs> <laughs> Because he was, because he was Wales. He'd just be like, he'd get super jazzed up in the gym or something, and just be like, oh, you just, and then you cook, and then you put in the, you put in the, you put in the, you, and he'd like slap you in the back of the head, and he'd be like, yeah, man, whatever. He said, great. <laughs> you watch that? They've got a reality show called Who Dares Wins, yeah, who dares. and uh, it's it's where they put civilians through. Uh, some of the SAS training, uh, and you see the the cadre on there; they're all like yoked and stuff. Yeah. Like Brick houses. Yeah, uh, but I mean the the ones that I've worked with, I, I will always speak very highly of you know of the Iraqi, our Iraqi equivalent, they're, like their strike teams, mm-hmm. like their kind of special forces teams. They they moved and operated just like we did. Like you, very I would cool. watch them, and I I've seen I've I was observing them do like i was watching the aerial footage of them do one of their missions stuff like they look just like us you know and how they move and stuff so uh, much respect but i didn't actually work with too many foreign you know national foreign national armies and stuff like that but uh, i did work with the uh the italian equivalent to the 75th ranger regiment oh really they were they were cool what were they called i always forget what they're called it's some it sounds like ragu or some spaghetti sauce but uh (laughs) The Alpinos, the Alpinos. The Alpinos. Yeah, so the uh, they're the equivalent to the seventy fifth over there, and they were also behemoths of men. I remember we did a we did a training exercise with them in Germany, and that's how I got my Italian jump wings. Like we did like a like a friendship jump. Right on, man. And uh, yeah, they were cool. They were also tough because uh, I just remember there was this one guy, and he was he was the machine gunner. He was carrying the Mark forty eight, but he never wore a sling. He just cradled it in one arm. <laughs> And he walked, like a baby. He walked like 20K that night with just cradling this Mark 48 in his arm like a baby. Wow. Yeah, he was he was like 6'7", like 300-something pounds. Dude, so like people ginormous like that, man. man. Yeah, so they were cool, too. Right on, man. I hope that, Jake, I hope that answers your question yeah. adequately. And even right. if it doesn't, we're moving on, okay? Yeah. Deal with it. Put in the next one. The attack of the Revengers of the Answers the, the, the Questions. The, the, quad, the quad questioning. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. So moving on here. So that was Faceless Jake. And this one is Griffiths111 via YouTube. And he says, or she, we don't discriminate. (laughs) In your experience, soldiers usually talk about politics, internal and external. Or is it not a topic that, in general, soldiers like to talk about? Did I say that weird? No, I see. in your experience, do soldiers usually talk about politics, Internal either inside or outside, or is it not so- something that people generally talk about? Okay. You got it. No. Right. Okay, yeah. No. The military likes to talk politics. That's all we <laughs> do, really. It's really funny, though. It's, it's extremely ironic, because if you think about it, like, most of the, you know, I don't want to say like left or right is most of the right is in the military. Yeah, it's, I think I think that's a safe assumption. Yeah, yeah, a lot of the military is right now. There is that's funny. They are right. They're right, man. <laughs> they are right. There's a lot of right. Yeah, but uh, so it's very interesting because when there's a a left leadership, it's like they are very loud, but in a way that doesn't compromise them, and it's and it's funny because at the end of the day, they still work for them. So like the loudest dudes are like in the military yet they work for the government interesting they, yeah I, yeah because you when you're in the military you're working for the government you yeah. have a government job you, you know, are a government job. which is not not something people normally they think like you know go oh, you're a soldier yeah yeah they like, think no, we're government workers yeah, yeah exactly we all have the same id all the dod <laughs> people have the same right, ID, yeah so. it's the same bureaucracy or maybe different bureaucracy but uh no yeah as far as just to answer the question yeah the topic does come up a lot it does come up a lot i mean in in fear of repercussions a lot of the time it's not spoken hmm. like past you know your your level mm-hmm. your level of chain so it doesn't go up the hierarchy obviously if like i have a problem with what the leaderships are doing i'm not gonna as like a private be like squad leader or team leader <laughs> tell them that, that i hate what they're doing oh, oh sure i'll tell him 
Yeah. All right, here's That's going to work out really well. Old Private Joe Bob is <laughs> really having a problem with, you know, how we're treating him. Oh, okay, I'll tell the platoon sergeant. He'll take care of it. No, it never, it never does. I'm trying to think of uh, memories and stuff from my time. I mean, the, the Army takes all kinds. You know, you, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's inaccurate to think that uh, it's just a bunch of right wing good old boys. That no, join it's not. Everybody, there's people it takes all kinds. Uh, you know, join the military and stuff. People have all sorts of opinions across Absolutely. a broad spectrum and stuff like that. The one thing I think that is a common is that they all signed up. You know, yeah. To do a job. A lot of people sign up for. I met a lot of guys. I met a lot of people in in the military that did not sign up with any intention of wanting to go to war or wars. Yeah. You no, know, they signed up for maybe the packages, you know, yeah, the, the education, benefits. the benefits. Everybody they, has a different reason. They have a career path. I I know I knew one guy where like he had a specific career path that led into he wanted to do things in the Hollywood industry and he signed up for the military to serve and learn a certain skill set so that he could specifically go into the Hollywood entertainment industry. You know, it, like Com Cam or something? No, no, it was like it was explosives, you know. Oh, he wanted and, to be like an explosive guy. Yeah, yeah, and and he, and he not not patriotic, nothing like like no, this is a career path that I've specifically chosen to do. That's uh, you know. And so uh no, man, it, it's a uh, you know, in, in SF, like people, you know, everybody's opinion matters because it's a small team. Mm-hmm. You know, every so everybody, what you do affects everybody else to a greater degree. And I just remember a lot of just guys very eloquently, good conversation, stuff like that. Uh, I feel like I I learned a lot. You know, I cut that that stereotype is what I had. Of, yeah. It's a bunch of right wingers in the army, like yeah. when I went into the military, and then it got broken by my it time does. in the military. You it know? does, and I mean, like you encounter, just like you said, you encounter every single person. I think actually the military is more diverse than you know, ex- at least exposures to different cultures, because you got dudes. You're right. You do that are you know that have an opinion and they're like stuck at home or they live in the same town the rest of their life and they don't have exposure to like the rest of the world. Cause sure. I mean, or at least, and when I say the world, not just the world, but the United States, cause the United States is a mixing bowl in itself. Sure it is. So, yeah. Like, I mean, you can't, you can't go anywhere and be like, Oh, you must be from Texas. Cause you talk like a Texan. It's like, we don't, we don't speak the same. We don't have the same. Like the South is different from, you know, the West coast, the East coast, completely different from the Midwest. And the South, even within itself has very oh, degrees, yeah. you know, extremely like Louisiana, the accent versus, is, you know, you can Georgia, from, Georgia, Florida. You can tell Arkansas extremely heavy. Mm-hmm. Texans extremely polite. Yeah, I had never even left the United States before I went to the military. So the, joining the military actually afforded me. I got to travel even you know mm-hmm. in the United States, Indiana, Hawaii, you know, all that kind of Georgia, yeah. North Carolina, all that kind of stuff. But then I also got to go to South Korea and Iraq and you know Germany you know yeah like no that. it's good it, it, it gives you exposure and it exposes you to different perceptions so it almost forces you to think differently from where you were raised yeah so if, you're, think, if you're lucky yeah yeah if you're yeah if you're lucky enough to travel which I mean big chances you're going to travel if you join the military um, but it doesn't always happen you can't mm. guarantee nothing's a guarantee in the army right. or whatever branch but no man uh, I hope that answers your question what is that Griffiths Griffiths. Oh, I feel like I'm getting Harry Potter vibes, but yeah, like, like Gryffindor. 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 <laughs> nice. All right, and this is our what is this? The final, the final question. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I'll ask you a question, Cam. Okay. Uh, a- Aim Valdez Seven uh, on Instagram asked us the question. So I wanted to know if you guys could explain gunshot wounds, like in the movies, soldiers or action heroes say the bullet went clean through quote unquote and then they'll survive however in other movies and shows they'll say the same thing and then they'll die uh i just wanted to know what is the fact and what is the myth it sounds like a very medic heavy this question <laughs> good thing i have a lot of medical experience go um, for it man take what's your take sure man so obviously shot placement um and the uh, amount of you know injury the mechanism of injury how did they you know how did it happen uh, i mean well we know the mechanisms because it's gunshot wound Mm -hmm. but uh yeah typically a clean wound is what you're fighting at that point is is the time you're fighting the clock because massive hemorrhaging is going to take effect and hemorrhaging is the body losing blood like losing blood pressure right Mm -hmm. yeah yeah because it's it your body's a closed system yeah you get that bullet hole in there now it's it's, open stuff's leaking leaking out it's leaking out and you need that blood to live yeah so and massive hemorrhaging is the biggest killer on the battlefield like that is number one okay and that's why when you're being taught medical stuff, it used to be ABCs, which is like airway, breathing, you know, circulation. 
And now that's terrible because, you know, you have to treat bullet injury, the gunshot wounds first. first. That's like the first thing. If there's a hole, you got to plug it immediately. And that's yes. why tourniquets are now starting to become SOP where it's always on your body. Mm. Um, but tourniquets only go as far as your extremities, right? Your arms and legs. Um, but if a bullet coat glows, glow, glows, goes clean a glowing through, bullet hole. shot placement, that's where it comes into effect, right? Because if I'm shot anywhere in the box, that's going to be extreme that's going to be more detrimental than me being shot in the arm or leg right Mm -hmm. um it takes your your blood pressure is you know as farther you get from your heart as lower it is okay so anything in the box where your vital organs are located it's going to be harder to plug so Mm. especially if you're shot in your lungs because then you're going to need to patch it with occlusive dressing right and then once occlusive dressings are set then you got to start worrying about tension pneumothorax and basically which is your lungs fill up with air there's nowhere for them to go right so they continue to fill and fill and fill placing more stress on the heart which comes ends up strangulating the heart and you die of cardiac arrest right but what you're asking here aim valdez is <laughs> um some some of them are correct it like i said it all depends on where they're shot how fast the uh you know how fast they can treat the wound how fast they can you know offer some sort of aid uh, if it's in the legs, you can for you can basically field craft tourniquets out of you know, worse examples a belt. But if you have some any type of windless instrument like a stick or even like something just pretty solid, you can rip t-shirts into two bands, and all you do is wrap the t-shirt above the wound like a tourniquet, do a little knot, put the windless on top, and do another knot on top of that, and start twisting it. Okay. And that can act as a tourniquet. Then you use another piece of cloth to basically just tie that windlass in place mm. so that's like an improvised tourniquet um but if it's shot in the box you uh, honestly you don't want to you're not going to pack it because you're never going to pack in the box at all um you just got to have to cover it and basically cover both never going to pack in a box don't pack because what we're talking about with packing like just stuffing yeah, maybe stuffing cloth like or anything in there gauze yeah. to, to to pack it up to hold that pressure yeah because when you're packing you're packing towards vital organs there's a lot of things in there that you can pack towards plus the box is pretty open yeah so if you're packing there's infinite well not infinite because it depends how big the person is but there's a <laughs> lot of space for that gauze to go and it can create problems so yeah. you never really want to pack in the box so what you have to do is use occlusive dressings which are just some sort of plastic some sort of like you can like people there's been examples of people using mre bags as occlusive dressing you just duct tape on each side over make sure the wound is you know clean wait till they exhale and then wipe the blood and slap that thing on there but Mm. then if there's an exit wound or there's an entrance wound there is an exit wound most likely so you always got to check the back too but Mm. um yeah that's that's pretty much what you got to worry about is just timing how fast can i treat this person Mm -hmm. let's see and Usually sure. there's, you know, obviously there's artistic license and stuff like that. But when it comes to the real world, no, I, the considerations you're talking about are really important. Yeah. It's, and, it's, and what I like about your explanation is that it's, it's, it's the simplest one. Like mm-hmm. it's lowest common denominator. Everybody, we got one concept that we're working with, right? Yeah. Because when you're on the battlefield, it's you don't got a lot of time, you mm-hmm. know, and it's uh, things could be happening and stuff. So it's like, what's the baseline, bare minimum thing that we have to do in order to save your life? You know, it's not yeah. pretty. But mm-hmm. it is it is effective, right? You know, yeah. we just want to stabilize until we can get to higher care. Yeah, like we're not gonna cure you of you know your gunshot or your broken leg or your head injury or your blast injury right then and there. Mm-hmm. It's obviously gonna take some time. You need to recover and you need to seek higher medical attention. That's why we're always flying them to you know put them on the table. Mm-hmm. But what we offer right then and there is basically just stabilizing medicine. We uh. The format we use is called MARCH, right? It's massive hemorrhaging, airway, respiration, circulation, and then hypothermia, head injury, and then evacuation. So what I was pretty much taught is M-A-R, get the fuck out of here. That's the acronym we, <laughs> we taught. So it's just like treat massive hemorrhaging, make sure they're breathing, make sure they don't have any signs of tension, pneumothorax, using, and if they do, needle decompressions, and then put them on the litter and get them, get them out of there, get them exfilled as fast as possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've seen dudes come in on the table that I was shot multiple times. I've seen dudes with double tourniquets on both legs, legs blown off, like shot Whoa. multiple times in the box, and they've survived. So it, it, it's all time. It's all time dependent. And mm-hmm. I guess in this question more specifically is, um, in yeah, movies portrayal portray like weapons. Like you get shot once, you're dead. Right. They you die know? instantly. Instantly, it's like an off like, button. Boom, yeah. immediately dead. <laughs> 
Yeah, and that's it realistically it just comes down to shot placement, you know, number of times, um, and like yeah, it's all about shot placement. Somebody, uh, there's a popular myth out there. I think talk about like, well, the kind of bullet depends on you know, like the caliber of bullet. Mm-hmm. Uh, not necessarily because it all depends on how it impacts the body and exactly. what it impacts. You know? And everyone thinks the bigger the bullet, the bigger the, the more damage. So like, that's not always the case because if you think about like our rifles, five five six, it's a really high velocity round. So that round isn't gonna, you know, it's gonna go in and immediately out. It's traveling mm-hmm. so fast, it's almost a maiming round. Mm. So that's why, like, one shot with a M4 typically won't do it. That's why we always, you know, bang, 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 bang. bang, bang. <laughs> but, <laughs> seven in, seven in the yeah. chest, 14 yeah, in the head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, to keep it realistic, if you really want to know, that's what it is, man. Yeah. Um, but, uh, no, but then you think about, like, a smaller round, which is like a 5.45, which is like an AK-74 round. Now that thing's deadly. Mm. That thing, it's smaller so as it gets terminal, it starts tumbling. So right when it hits the person, that round is more likely to start tumbling. So which means it could tear up the body as it goes tear through it a little bit. It becomes more. a f-ing table saw essentially, mm. and it goes in. So you can see someone get shot by a five four five in their in their stomach, and it comes out their neck. Right, because it's moving around yeah, the body it's, because it's meeting that obstruction and then taking yeah, a different pathway. It's tumbling. Yeah. So that round is that's that's a deadly round. Mm-hmm. And then I mean, it, you can go into it because then there's the whole debate between nine millimeter and forty millimeter, and they're hmm. like, "What's better?" And it's just like, no, nah, there's not a lot of not a lot of evidence. It's, I mean, people say like forty is more penetrating for like barriers and stuff, but it's interesting. It is very interesting. So it's a whole conversation. You know, it one, is. There's ballistics. You want to yeah, get into ballistics, ballistics? We can get into ballistics. Yeah. But I'd bring in some experts because I'm not the best right. at ballistics. I just shoot the gun, man, and hope it works. There is a whole world that I've been introduced to of gun enthusiasts. You know, like I, yeah. You know, there's the popular perception that if you're in the military, you're a gun expert. That's oh, not. No. That's not the case. That's Anybody. It's a hobby like off. anything else. Yeah. 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 There's an area. There's area of knowledge. It's an area of knowledge, broadly speaking. And then within that area of knowledge, there are subsets of knowledge there are different lanes that people are into exactly. whether it's firearms and old and new firearms whether it's uh, you know types of bullet calibers and stuff like that and then era and then make and then yeah. have you have you heard anything about the uh, the ngsw the new weapon that they're looking for the next generation squad weapon that they're looking to replace like the m4 and the saw yeah, and stuff it's like that sig stuff. yeah so yeah, yeah. 6.8 millimeter you yeah, know i was just watching one, a video the weird. other day yeah the one where it's like the plastic bullets. yeah it's like a plastic yeah pl- polymer case with a mm-hmm. metal bullet and then there's one where it's it looks like just a little tube but because mm-hmm. the bullet is encased within its own carrying case yeah. you know it's very uh, interesting yeah yeah it's just always fighting for the newest and greatest and yeah innovative. maybe not field i don't know that's gonna be an interesting thing that that new following that contract who's gonna get it but uh, right right it's, it's, it would be very interesting to see if that actually pulled through because i mean I've, I've heard a lot of issues with the pol- the whole polymer thing At yeah you never got to pick up brass anymore huh right and they're talking about the weight was like a big consideration yeah, a big you know consideration. uh but then also how they're made but somebody was saying like that technology of polymer bullets is advanced so it used to be you could squeeze them and then they could fall apart but like uh, but yeah, the weight thing is, you know, is a consideration. And then like, yeah, it's just, just a gotta no burning polymers, you know, healthy in the long run. Oh, right. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the what something, there was something about the powder and stuff like that, uh, or the heat, the heat that is retained inside the weapon. Whereas with a brass, that brass gets hot and it's ejected from the yeah. weapon as you fire a bullet. But then with the polymer, well, polymer doesn't take up any heat, so where's that heat go? Well, it stays in the barrel and stuff. Yeah. So it's it's interesting all of the different aspects that you have to consider, uh, that these companies have to consider, and then also just all the politics that I'm sure gets involved. Who who's got the lobby? Who's got the ear of the senator and stuff like that? You know, they, sometimes it's not even the best weapon that makes it no. in. You know, because no. we've been talking. You've talked about the saw often enough. You're like, saw is not a good weapon. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. It all depends. Yeah, that whole thing. Just like when they t- took up the, uh, so the army. You ever seen the M17? It's the new military pistol that replaced the Beretta. No. Which is weird because we got Glocks in regiment. We got Glock 19. Crazy. I, yeah. And then the army picked up the M17, and I've had the pleasure of using both now. And uh, like the M17 is good, but I remember the 19x which is a glock which okay. is basically a 19 slide with a 17 frame interesting was also in the running and i like that pistol way better than, okay but this is just my opinion yeah and plus like the m17 like when they won the contract they actually changed the piece after 
winning the contract to save money and the and the pistol ended up being diarrhea like uh, you, like you would, <laughs> yeah you would drop it and it would go off and like it, it would yeah like a lot of safety hazard like the pistol would break all the time so they're like what the <laughs> are you you gypped us Sig. oh man but, uh, i mean it's, it's a decent pistol now but uh, there is pistol there are much better pistols out there for less money yeah in my opinion but uh i don't know man i don't know I just work here. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here, yeah. man. And it's fun. I like how you brought up the comment with like you can be in the military and that doesn't make you a gun expert by any means. Yeah. That is so freaking true. Like everyone thinks of like you're that should have been in the stereotype episode. <laughs> Literally, everybody thinks you're like a firearms expert if you're in the military. Like, no. You you only know someone is really proficient or knows what they're doing. This is a really big indicator of like I can tell right off the bat. If someone like has any sort of knowledge just by looking how they set up their plate carrier mm, interesting yeah. how they set up how they run their stuff mm -hmm. like you can tell right off the bat that someone has general knowledge of how mm. to do it correctly just by looking at how they set their stuff up mm. like that's a big indicator i have recommitted myself since actually breaking into like the public like content creation space mm -hmm. the online space to to build, rebuild my knowledge base. You know, you and I have talked about this. Like, mm. uh, you know, I want, I, I, I have no kit. I want, I've, I've been on the range in quite a while. You know, yeah. uh, and, or you know, as far as like focused, formatted, streamlined training, like the latest and greatest stuff. Because, you know, my most of the knowledge that I have is 11 years old. Because that's when I got out of the military. Yeah. You know, uh, but I, I really, I want to rebuild that knowledge base and stuff like that. Almost not because like that's what a green beret would know necessarily unless he was like an 18 bravo or something like mm -hmm. that but i have an image of my mind of what i believe a green beret the honor of a green beret the integrity of a green beret would be and the to green, me that the gods, of, green the gods of the green beret have dub have dubbed me you know i've uh, they require at least some weapons bay you know weapons knowledge and stuff like that and my community and stuff has been really they've been really great because they're all gun enthusiasts too you know so, so they send me articles and videos and all mm -hmm. the grand thumb stuff like that yeah, you know that's great we need, to, yeah. we need to get them on this podcast let's get them on the podcast let's get them on the podcast put them down <laughs> um but yeah dude it's 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 interesting um to say the least but we'll get you there yeah thanks man we'll get thanks. you there don't worry but I think that wraps up the questions, right? We kind of went off on a tangent there, as we usually do. That's okay. This entire episode has been a tangent. Yeah. This, we saved our tangents for, for this episode. Aim Valdez 7, we hope we answered your question. Yeah, thanks. Somewhere in that entire dialogue. It's No, it's it's. I, I'm sure they will be very happy. If they're not, deal with it. Deal with it. Um. But uh, what Recess do you say, man? Been, Recess has been canceled due to lack of hustles. <laughs> deal with it. Recess, the beatings will continue until morale improves. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, man, I do. I, I knew what you were about to say, and the, I agree. The game. The game. Let's play the game. The greatest game. The deadliest the game. game. And I think this game is going to be ran by the lovely Chris. He is a lovely. It person. is. Oh, and thank you. You guys are so complimentary. Um, this game is called What Number Am I Thinking Of? Seven. Mm. That was the quickest game ever. All right. Well, that wraps All it right, up. Rap, okay. Thank you for watching. All right. Cue music. <laughs> Cue music. <laughs> um, no. Instead of trying to guess what number I'm thinking of, I'm going to say the name of a franchise, and you have to tell me which one in the franchise, like which number in the franchise, I think is the best one, and also which one I think is the worst. Cool, oh, man. Oh, man. Can we, do we get a warm-up round? This sounds uh, like there a, is a warm up think. Round. There a is a warm-up round. There is 100% a warm-up round. Are we ready? Yes. Yes. It's we'll not as hard as you think. It's harder. Okay. okay? <laughs> so the warm-up is Indiana Jones. Okay. okay. So which one of those do you think I think is the best, and which one of those do you think I think is the worst? I think well, this one, this is a good warm-up because I think this is pretty easy. Yeah, the worst one is Crystal Skulls, obviously. Crystal that Skulls, Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. That is correct. Yes. I think yes. that Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls is a dumpster fire. So yes. which one do I think is the best? I think you think Last Crusade is the best one, yeah, number I'm three in the franchise. That is incorrect. I think Raiders of the Lost Ark is the best uh, one. That's not even an Indiana Jones movie. What? Because it doesn't say Indiana Jones in the title. <laughs> it's Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark. I know, I know. But Get the, out of here. when it first came out, it was called Raiders of the Lost Ark. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> great warm up round. That All just right. shows you just how difficult this is going to be. Oh, Are man. we ready? Yes. Yes. All right. The first franchise is the Alien franchise, including Prometheus and Covenant. Covenant, but not the AVP part. Okay. I 
So we got I Alien, Aliens, Probably Alien Three, like Prometheus, and Alien Covenant. That's just that's mix. That's just mixing too many. Th- it's like I like okay. steak, but I don't consider a hamburger a steak, you know? Yeah. Because it's mixed. Unless it's ground up. There is a soft spot in my heart for Aliens vs Predator Requiem, mm. but that's just me. Okay. Well, that's the spot I'll aim for then. All right. So <laughs> we're saying. I'm just What's gonna... what do you think is which one do you think I think is the best one? I don't Which know number? that I have. I, I don't. I think I'm morally obligated to only say, say the second. The, the second one. <laughs> Actually, you know what? You know what? We're thinking about you. This is about you, Chris. So, I'm gonna say your favorite one is Alien, the first one. Cam, what do you think? I'm gonna go with the second one. I, I rewatched the second one. It's great. It is the second one. The second <sighs> one's clearly the best one. Should have went with my instincts. Mm. Clearly the best one. Alien good different kind of movie though aliens just a fantastic movie and then to finish this sucker off and baster covenant's the worst i would also say covenant's the worst i think prometheus is the worst Whoa. oh prometheus, that would have been my next choice the whole like the ship rolling and she's running away from it directly in the path that it's rolling i was yeah. like just turn left or right yeah also the, the scientist guy who's a biologist and he takes his glove off to touch an alien life form and oh, then it attacks oh, and him. And the, the cartographer who gets lost. Yes. Even with the technology that he's losing. Yes. <laughs> There's it's like they they acquired the stupidest team to go on this mission. Everyone's yeah. an idiot yeah, because everyone's the story an idiot. needs to so happen. So that, that movie bothered me a lot. Yeah. Also because they insisted that it was not an alien movie, and I was like, this is very clearly an alien movie. Yeah. Okay. The Halo franchise. Halo franchise. Which one do I think is the best, and which one do I think is the worst? Number three is the best. Uh, only, only because that's what I've heard from multiple people in my online community. I will also say Alien Three or Halo Halo Three is the best. I do think that Halo Three is the best one. Okay. Which one do I think is the worst? Um, Halo Two. I'm gonna have to go with Cameron on this one just because I don't have. I experience. also think it's Halo Two. Hey, you're one hundred percent. Which man. Halo Two still a lot of fun. I still think it's a great game, but I had to pick one. Yeah, yeah. it's it's Halo Two. It's just like eh. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Right. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's not bad. It's just like it's just that like ODST was better, Reach yeah. was better, Reach and the first great. one is the first yeah, the one. The first so. one's OG. Why is three generally perceived to be the best one out of all those? Uh, the story, it was just like a culmination. Okay. Yeah, the story, the new weapons combined yeah. with the old ones, and then they didn't get too whack. Like, it okay. was, yeah. It was, so they just did a really good job with it. You know, it was like the culmination, right. like Infinity War was for the MCU. Fair just enough. Many years leading up to it. Cool. Yes. Um, all right, the Expendables. The Expendables. Ooh. The Dependables. To, to me, this franchise actually has gotten better. Like, the John Wick series, to me, each successive one has gotten better. I've liked them more. Um, oh, I should have put John Wick on here. Damn. Okay. <laughs> anyway. We can do a bonus round. Um, Expendables. I like... Which is the one that had Jean-Claude Van Damme? Was that the second one? I believe so. I really liked that one. I'm going to say the second one. Is, Cam? Is your favorite one. I'm going to say it's the numero uno. Expendables the first. Okay. The first one. It's number two. It's Expendables number two. two. I'll be honest, I haven't seen. Uh, it's been actually, I have seen the second, but it was like one of those movies where you just put it on in the background. Right. I've seen them. I've seen them all in the theater, but only once, and it was years ago, obviously. Yeah. All right. Which one is? Which one's the worst? I'm gonna say Brown, the yeah. third one. Just as a guess. You're saying the first one as well? Yes. <laughs> Way to stick to your guns, but it's the third one. Okay. The third one's the worst. <laughs> one. Okay. <laughs> It was it was a weird tactic, but I it like was. your strategy. Was, I'm thinking outside the box. You, you had it. I appreciate your strategy. shot. You know? Exactly. They're making another one, right? They yeah, are. they are, and yeah. they're adding. <laughs> Which Sylvester Stallone's like 78 now. And he's got to stop, man. So he's taking those horse steroids, man. <laughs> he's yeah. Steroids. Yeah, steroids. Right. Superhuman. Star Wars franchise. Ugh. Oh Does this man. include like Rogue One or Rogue like... One Six Seven? This, this is, is this one is, through nine. This is one through nine. I'm not including Rogue One, oh, although in Rogue hindsight I should have because I do really enjoy Rogue One. Okay. Okay. But this is just the the Skywalker saga, as they call it. The Skywalker yeah. saga. So which one do I think is the best? And you don't have to get the number. It can be in the order that they came out. It doesn't have to be the actual number of the right, movie. Right, right, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to say your favorite, the best one that you think is, is the best one that you think is the best. Well, no, it's um, not just the one I think is the best. Maybe I should have clarified this it is the best. It is the best. My oh, opinion is correct. Objectively speaking, yeah. well, then I'm going to say Return of the Jedi. Or, yeah, Return, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Number five? Empire Strikes Back. Number Which five. Would be number Empire five. Strikes yeah. Back. Yes, that's what I was going to say as well. That is correct. That is objectively the best one. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to go ahead and say 
number one is your is the worst one. This is tough. Phantom Menace. Number oh, one. Oh, I'm even. sorry. That's with Darth Maul. Number two. <laughs> no way. Attack of the Clones. Or Revenge of the Sith. Well, the I'll first... go ahead and give you a clue. This is a twofer. I think two kind of tie for being the worst one. Okay, now I'm gonna like uh, the only, see the only this one's whack because Jar Jar Banks <laughs> sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and like that whole it's the only thing about number one is it has Darth Maul in it, and that's yeah. like yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead and say number one because okay. it's it's terribly it's like at the point where it's like they're starting to experiment with CGI, but they haven't quite figured it out. Sure, it doesn't hold up well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm. This is tough for me because I think all of the entire sequel trilogy, seven, eight, nine, are garbage. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot about those ones yeah. too. Never mind. You, you block them from your mind because I it's have because like I was PTSD. like they don't exist. Yeah, because they suck. I'm gonna say the the worst one, the objectively worst one, is nine. Uh, I'm gonna say eight. Rise of right Skywalker. before. That. And, uh, yeah, when Last like, Jedi and Rise of Skywalker, Garbaggio. Yeah, when she's working with Luke, right? In the oh, you, you mean you mean knowing everything and not needing, re- not really needing Luke, and Luke is like a cynical old man yeah, that went to that island to die. Yeah, you know, he's really negative. Yeah, he's a lot really... of strong feelings coming <laughs> yeah. from Israel. <laughs> but I don't really care. No, number eight. Then I'm going with number eight. I'm gonna go with number the nine. The tie is between number two, Attack of the Clones. Oh, okay, because that one is hot garbage. <laughs> And then it is number nine, Rise of Skywalker. Yes, because Rise of Skywalker, I tried to, re- I, I saw it in the theater, and then I rewatched it on Disney Plus, and it is just stupid. It's the worst. Like every five minutes, I was like, "Well, why are they doing that? Why are there horses in space? Like, why are there <laughs> horses, horses in a in space? No, no, no. That at the the final battle on that planet, I forget the name of the planet. Nobody um, cares. They use horses to attack a. Like on the surface a of a star destroyer, yeah, a star yeah. destroyer, and like, I was like, "Where did they get these horses from?" Well, they brought they them from the from them? the planet where the Death Star had had crashed. crashed. Yeah, did they import the horses? I don't. They were on a ship, and I was like, "You already have a ship. It's just it's garbage. It's just <laughs> it's hot garbage." And okay. also, why were, why was he cloned anyway? All right, moving uh, on. Yeah. Number two and number nine, the worst. Although number eight also not great. Number one also really bad. Number three, Revenge of the Sith. Pretty I like good. Revenge of the Sith. Mm. General Kenobi. Right. <laughs> Hello there. Hello there. All right, the Yo, Predator franchise, mm. not including AVP again, but the Predator franchise. It's amazing how many of these there have been. Uh, you I know think there's is. five. Is there there's five? five. Okay. There's five. So predator, one, predator two, two, Predators. Predators, The Predator. The pre- Wait, which I one am I forgetting? Oh, maybe there's only four. I think there's only four. Because okay. there's Predators and then the most recent one. The Predator. I'm going to go and say Original is your favorite. Original is the best one. Yeah, that is the best one. I think there's one. That, this is an easy one. It's yeah. a scientifically it's a, accurate answer. Yeah. It might be one of the best action movies ever. Ever created, ever. yes. So which one do I think is the, the worst? I think you think, I think that you think is is it's the the last one that was made and i only say that because he wears his tan beret like <laughs> and they never my, get the berets right and it's man. my least favorite one is the most recent one so I'm you're saying say, the predator i'm gonna say the last one as well it's garbage you're correct yeah for a lot of reasons but the main one is the beret it bugged the shit out of yeah me. Like, he can't even wear his tan i'm joking He's got cameron really i don't even hair. know what you're talking about he, you i'll bring up a picture of this right now. i just love how i uh, you know it, um the the main antagonist guy uh from this is us he has the like the predator like shoulder mounted motion you know the, yeah the, the laser cannon thing and he turns his head too much and blows his own head off yeah because i hear they couldn't get him back for reshoots Uh-oh. so they had to kill him you wow. know yeah it's called Pre- the predator the, the predator, predator. Right. and it's too bad because you know the guy who that was, was with the glasses shane, shane black, black yeah. was in the first one yeah, i don't know why i thought one. i don't know why i thought that would mean that he would make a good predator movie well it's because he wrote the first one <laughs> and he wrote a lot of action movies he did he All did right. the mission impossible franchise oh man oh. these are good man there's so many of these um i'm gonna say that you're f- the the best one and it's because I'm biased, but the best one is is. Oh, See now I'm now I'm second guessing myself. It's either the first one or the last one. It's either Fallout or the first mission. The first Mission Impossible one was a spy action espionage movie, and then they just progressively became more action oriented. You know, no mystery, no real kind of whatever. But I'm gonna say the I, I'm gonna go with the the last one for me. You're gonna say Fallout. Fallout. It's the, it's the best one. 
This is, I'm sorry. I'm so obsessed with finding you a picture of this beret. You can show me. <laughs> you can show me after we're done recording. Okay. Mission uh, Impossible. Which one do you think is my favorite? It's with Tom Cruise, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. Oh. Israel well, says number six, the most recent one. Fall I've out. only seen two of these. <laughs> <laughs> really? One, Which ones have you seen? One and two. One and two. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you've seen. I mean, the other. My other guess would have been the first one. Yeah. First one first is one amazing. Is yeah. I'm gonna go with number one then. It's number six. Fallout. Yes. Okay. So, which one of the Mission Impossible's do you think is? Do I think is the worst? Which again, this is objective, and okay. it definitively is the worst one. But number two. I'm gonna say. Wait, is that is that the John Woo one? That is. Oh, that's a tough one. I'm gonna say number two. It is number two, appropriately wow. numbered because it. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. Mission Impossible he, Two. He uses the mask thing like way too many times. Yeah. Well, it's just it's a ridiculous movie. Yeah. And John Woo, not the best director. And now you guys did really well. You did a lot better than I thought you were gonna do. That's great. Which shows that you guys know my sensibilities better. We do. Now, do you want to attempt this bonus round? Yes. Oh, absolutely. So this one, Does this one's a little harder because these are these are older movies. Oh, okay, cool. But the franchise is the Man with No Name trilogy. The Man with No Name. I've never even heard of this. That's movie. the Clint Eastwood westerns. The Sergio oh, Leone. So it's uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Your favorite. A fistful of dollars, and then a few dollars more. Correct. Okay. Those are the three. Yeah, I'm just gonna be like, yeah, Tombstone. So. <laughs> Classic spaghetti westerns. <laughs> yeah. You know? So which one do you think is my favorite of those three? All right, Israel. You get I gotta say, I'm what? gonna say the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. He's going the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. And then I'm gonna say your the worst one is a few dollars more. Because it's almost, it feels like it's the same plot as the Fistful of Dollars. That is incorrect. <laughs> My favorite one is for a few dollars more. Because oh. <laughs> I love the pocket watch part. The, exactly. sh- the showdown at the end where they shoot each other when the music stops. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Fistful of Dollars is my least favorite one. Oh, wow. Okay. I love the good, the bad, and the ugly, but I love for a few dollars more. Was mm-hmm. the Fistful of Dollars, wasn't that It goes Fistful of Dollars. It's, uh, yeah. Yojimbo. It's Yojimbo. The Japanese samurai. Which then they remade into... Last Man Standing with Bruce Willis, where it's oh. set, they're like gangsters in the 30s. Oh my it's gosh. the exact same story. It, oh. They've made it a thousand times. Yeah, yeah. Since we're on the topic of Westerns really quick, there's been a Western I've been trying to find for the longest time, and I'm just going to explain to you the plot and see if you can help me really quick. Okay. I guess this is a game. Too. Yeah, this is also a game. Okay, so they're in the Western times. Okay. And Narrows it down. Then, ba- then there's, there's a competition. It's like a showdown competition. Uh, oh, the, quick the good, and the, the bad, and the oh, the quick and the dead. The yeah. quick and the dead. Sharon Stone's in it. Yeah, Russell Crowe. Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah okay. Leonardo DiCaprio. The quick and the dead. A very the young quick Leonardo. And the dead. Directed yep. by Sam Raimi. And the main character is the lady, right? Yeah, it's Sharon Stone. Okay. The that's good, a that's a pretty good one. Dead. I remember that being pretty good. It's not yeah. bad. All right. <laughs> good job, gentlemen. Uh, I'm really disappointed in the bonus round, but what can you do? That's fine. Uh, but yeah, you guys did really well. I'm proud of you. Thanks, Chris. That was fun. I love these games, man. Thank you. Thank God. Well, folks, we really, really, really appreciate you joining us. Not just really, really, but really, really, really appreciate you joining us. Um, Thanks for listening. And we release a new episode of the podcast every Wednesday, as you know. Uh, We also release the video version on our YouTube page, Pop Culture Field Manual on YouTube. Um, Like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your enemies even. I'm sure they they need to get out more and have more entertainment in their lives. Yeah, because literally the enemy of my enemy is your friend. That's right. So that would make your enemies our friends. Yeah, right. something you can write us in and let us know. Okay. Uh, but and speaking of that, write us at PCFM Podcast at gmail dot Great segue. We love to hear from you. That was a great transition. That was good. This improv, we're getting really good. At this we're really good. Thing. We have we're a good. thing going. It's good. We don't take classes <laughs> every Wednesday, folks. If you want to hang out with me a little bit more, go to Twitch TV slash My Happy Self. That's my uh, Twitch stream. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Good times. And if you would like to check out my streetwear brand kit god you can find us on kit god apparel on instagram or on our website at www.kitgodapparel.com thank you again for listening we love you get out of here